Hello, 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 hello. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Yes, um, it's another wonderful time. It's another wonderful time as we continue talking about various health topics. Yes, so many health topics we have to talk about. Yeah, um, previous sessions, previous weeks, we've had interesting, interesting times where we had uh, uh, um, so many health conditions. So many, so many. We talk about bursitis, pseudo bursitis. We talk about um, hydrocephalus. We talk about like it's uncountable, uncountable number of conditions. And, and, and today is not an exception. Yes. And last week we 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 we, we shared out to talk about a particular very important condition. And then we had um, various inputs. We asked questions even before the today discussion that some people had this condition and then they still have it, but they are wondering how to solve this 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 issue, um, and and I'm sure by the end of the discussion we we'll have a, a a a fair idea of how to deal with this condition, and so today's condition is coccidemia, coccidemia, coccidemia. So the spelling is C O double C y d y n i a coccidemia uh, so if you're not a science student um the common name is called tailbone pain tailbone pain that's a common name tailbone pain so uh, the the name suggests for itself that it occurs um at the tailbone so which tailbone are we talking about i'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll get to know including some pictures too for us to be able to appreciate the condition as best as possible okay so um we start this in the name of the father and of the son and the holy spirit is this this discussion i'm sure it'll be a very interesting discussion and then we'll have a lot to learn yes and so today's discussion is outline is um the topic the meaning of the condition the history the prevalence the pathophysiology that is the condition itself how the disease comes about, the condition comes about, the epidemiology, that is also the incidence, how often, uh, which um, gender is like to have this condition, and we talk about classification, we talk about the definition, and then symptoms, signs and symptoms. We talk about various angles of measurement of this condition. We we'll talk about um, the lesions as observed in the treatment. And then the types of the condition, the subtypes of the condition, we talk about the treatment and we talk about um, the lifestyle modifications. So, um, yes, yeah, so we are talking about the condition called tailbone pain, or the scientific word is called coccidemia. Coccidemia. And I'm sure that we'll have a very, very interesting time. Okay, so what is coccidemia? What is coccidemia, also known as tailbone pain? So coccidemia is a condition that affects a particular part of the body. That is, the we have in the body we have bones at your back, we have bones at your neck, your chest, your mid back, your lower back, and then just beneath your lower back we have some small small bones there and this bone is called the sacral bone so combination of these bones is called a sacral vertebrae when we talk about sacral vertebrae it means the small small bones coming together forming sacral vertebrae so i'm sure we'll have a very very good picture presentation of what i'm talking about so it's called sacral vertebrae and then sacral vertebrae we have um, five sacral vertebrae in the body. So it's the sacral vertebrae around the buttocks region. So it's very important in very, very clinical conditions and then very, very important life processes such as life um, childbirth. So these wounds are very important. And then during the discussion, I'm sure we'll have a very, very, very good understanding of the condition. So this condition comes about by so many 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 factors there are so many many causes of this condition but then 
we'll talk about one very 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 important factor and that is trauma that is when you fall down so when you sit down on your buttocks very hard you're likely to injure this structure called the sacral vertebrae and then you're likely to have coccydemia or tailbone pain so now we talk about the anatomy yes so the anatomy means what are the structures there that we can attribute or affiliate this condition with so we have bones we have tendons we have ligaments we have blood vessels we have nerves we have so many structures around there we have fascia to be able to hold this bone in place called the sacral vertebrae the sacral vertebrae doesn't move but these structures that i've mentioned some of them help in the movement of this bone and then they allow certain normal life processes to take place as expected okay so then we talk about the condition called coccydemia it's mainly a pain around the buttocks region pain around the buttocks region so people have complained that oh when i sit down i feel pain around my buttocks region so if you have someone who has com com has been complaining of the fact that when i sit down for some time within some few seconds i feel pain at my buttocks region the person is likely to have um coccydemia yes and so we will we'll, we'll, we'll then have to zoom in to talk about or to probe further for the condition called coccydemia okay so coccydemia is around the buttocks region as a result of either injury to that side that is trauma that is when someone falls down on the buttocks region or during childbirth or during pregnancy or after childbirth so why will you say during pregnancy yes because sometimes the weight of the baby is such that it's so heavy that it sits on this bone and this bone is very important structure that helps also to hold the baby in place during pregnancy and so when the baby is quite heavy there's pressure on structures as this to hold the, 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 the baby in place and then there's likely to be injury to the ligament there and then further injury to the bone there and this could result in coccygenia so childbirth processes could also result in coccygenia so we are talking about the cause of coccygenia it's very very important also we have various lifestyle activities that is your activity such as driving so someone or driver who drives long distances possible likely to to sit down for a long time so just imagine um someone who drives from here to the northern region he's likely to sit down for a long time and this will cause this bone to be impinged on and then it could cause coccygenia okay so before we continue we let's look at a very very important structure so the structure we're talking about um yes so let's appreciate this so we can look at this structure now yes you could see this structure and i'm sure we will appreciate it well so this is called the pelvis the whole thing is called the pelvis this side called the pelvis yes and we have a structure here called ilium these two bones we all have some Every individual has some, every human being has some two bones. And then we have the lumbar vertebrae, the bone at your back. This is your lower back. So you have a bone here called the lumbar vertebrae that helps to hold your back in place to prevent you from going forward or coming backwards. It's very, very important. And this structure is very important to hold you upright. And then we have another one here called the sacral vertebrae. So this is what I was talking about initially. Sacral vertebrae. There are fused bones in the pelvic region of the body and any woman who is pregnant has to have this structure very strong this structure is supported by ligaments and tendons to hold the bone in place and then keep them from falling so these bones are held in place by ligaments and tendons and so when the baby is conceived the baby sits here for nine months so just imagine this please the baby sits here so if the baby is four kilos just imagine how long the baby sits here so the, there's likely to be pressure on this structure called the sacral vertebrae 
and then the coxis so this tip is called the coxis so in in the case where there is injury to this structure the coxis then we have coccidinia coccidinia so injury to this structure we have coccidinia so there'll be injury to some structures around this part of the body and then we could say that the person or the patient has had coccidinia okay so yes yeah, so i'm sure we have a fair idea of where the coccyx is in our body and then we continue with the discussion okay so um as we said there are very 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 key factors that could lead to this condition occurring primary is sometimes we don't know sometimes aging could predispose to structures around the side being weak and then it could lead to injury to this structure called the coccyx the coccyx or the tailbone yes so um this severity i mean the severity of the injury could be relative so there could be mild injury there could be moderate injury there could be severe injury where even movement is very very impossible so the person has to lie down probably for a week or two weeks or some days for the injury to heal yes okay so um various professions that could lead to this injury occurring we could have sports so football so just imagine a player being kicked and sits on the ground so he sits on this bone the pelvic bone the pelvic region he sits on it and then he has this part of the body that's the coccyx region being injured so if there's a fracture at the coccyx which we've shown and then i'm sure we'll have a very clear idea of this part of the body that they call the coccyx better in our various pictures that we've shown subsequently okay so we could have sports football we could have volleyball we could have rugby so depend any sports could be predisposed with this condition called coccydenia or tailbone pain we could have cycling so long distance cyclists could have injury or impingement to structures around the side of the body called the coccyx so as a cycling the cyclist rides long distance there could be over pressure on the coccyx and this could lead to moderate mild or severe injury to the coccyx region okay so the the, the risk of pain is is, is 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 relatively high because this structure is very small and and the smaller the surface area of a particular part of the body the higher the impact will influence the severity of the injury so what i mean is that if you have a smaller region if you apply a higher force there's likelihood that there could be a high effect on the area when you have a larger surface area you could have abilities of the body or the section of the body to absorb the injury so the effect of the injury will be less severe so coccyx coccygenia or coccyx pain or tailbone pain and uh, is, is 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 likely to happen more prevalently in people who sit a lot for long hours people who are cyclists people who engage in sports and um, people who drive for long distances okay so um this is mainly due to repetitive forces around the buttocks region that is the tailbone region or the coccygia region as a scientist will say there could be injury to the nerves around the side so there are also nerves around the side we have the coccygia nerve that is impinged so when it's impinged there could be coccygia or tailbone pain there could be also fractures around the coccygia vertebrae or the sacral vertebrae and this could infer someone to have coccydenia also there could be also bone spread there could be small small growths in the bone around the side so we showed earlier where the coccyx is and i'm sure we'll have a very good idea as time goes on 
where the cogs is and then we appreciate it better so when there's a bone spare around that side that is small small bones going around the bone there could also be pain around the side because it's an abnormal bone or presentation around the side okay so the fact is that um in anything the solutions are it yes the solution is but then we have to find out the solution in the right perspective so we're talking about how to treat this condition but before that there are other causes of this condition called tailbone pain or coccygenia we could have hypermobility when you talk about hypermobility it means that we have too much movement around the side so those who are those who are so flexible could stretch over stretch the structures around the side we have ligaments there so when there's over stretch around the side there could be tears in the ligaments that hold the bone in place and they could result in coccydenia so those who are hypermobile that is they are extra flexible that is those who engage in and um, ballet dance i'm not saying that ballet dance is very bad but then you are likely to have coccygenia because you could have over stretching of the structures around the side. So ballet dancers are also sport. It's a sport, um, which is taken as a hobby also. And this could you could have coccygenia. So it means that we'll be talking about various modifications also to help us prevent this condition in the later time during the discussion. Okay. So um, this condition can be very painful. But there are various ways to modify and prevent the pain so now we're talking about the prevalence so which people are likely to have this condition so it's certain that in research most females tend to have this condition most females tend to have this condition and the reason is that most females tend to have less strong structures to be able to hold that region and then also the fact that they are likely to carry babies around the region so the baby when conceived sits around that region so there could be over pressure around the side so research says that because they are likely to have more pressure or undue pressure around that region they're likely to have coccydemia but males don't carry baby they don't get pregnant so for them research says that they are likely to have this condition but that doesn't mean that they can't have this condition. There are other factors such as trauma that is injury to the side. Um, there are also sudden um, 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 stretch that is hypermobility which men are also predisposed to. There are also factors such as obesity. So if you have someone who is fat and um, not necessarily fat but has a higher body mass index by reason of higher weight and then also tall this could have a higher body mass in this and the person could be obese and the fact that the person is obese means it's likely to have coccydemia or tailbone pain last but not the least we could also have someone who sits a lot so if you sit a lot on in her chest in her chest there could be impingement on the bone or the nerves surrounding the bone and this could have we or the person having coccygenia or tailbone pain okay so we're talking about also later time and then a very very important structure is that in around the region is is called a posterior yeah posterior laxation or posterior ligaments and called a sacrococcygeal ligament so ligament and so when there's injury to this ligament one could have coccydemia so one or two very important legends or injuries that could occur resulting in coccydemia is posterior laxation of the coccyx or anterior laxation of the coccyx so if you have shifting of one of the coccyx bone that's the tailbone forward or shifting the bone backwards one could have coccydemia or hypermobility so 
if you are if your body is so flexible you could have this condition so two very important conditions that could result in coxinia is a posterior subluxation or posterior luxation of the coccyx or anterior luxation of the coccyx that is shifting of the bone forward of the coccyx so i'll show you the the, the coccyx very soon i'm sure those who just joined in uh, are, are wondering what the coccyx is what the coccyx is i'm sure we'll have a fair idea of what the coccyx is very soon and the muscles around that side the pictures will be shown to you very soon okay so we have three main causes of all the the, the lesion that results in the coccygenia so the first one is posterior um posterior luxation of the coccyx and then anterior luxation of the coccyx and the third one is the third one is hypermobility so upon talking about the condition or the lesion that could cause um coccygenia we now talk about the signs and symptoms so this condition actually affects areas around the buttox region yes the buttox region so one of the symptoms is that when the patient sits for long is a complaint of pain when the patient is about to sit so sitting for long could cause pain so the patient says i have pain in my buttox region i have pain around my buttocks region and when i sit down for long i feel pain i feel pain then you could suspect someone the patient the person to have coccydenia also when a person is about to sit the person could complain of pain not even at the point of sitting but when the person is about to sit the person can complain of pain and this could also mean the person could have coccydenia the third one is when the person is about to get up so upon sitting down when they ask the person to get up the person complains of pain around the buttocks region and this could also be mean that the person could have coccydenia another reason is also when the person goes to the washroom to ease himself the person says that yes ah when i'm and i'm going i'm easing myself um i feel pain around my buttocks region and it's it's, it's very uncomfortable <coughs> yes it's very uncomfortable sorry <coughs> and so it could mean that the person could have coccydenia then we could probe further to be able to assess how extensive um, or where exactly the, the, the pain is from. Also, um, this could also mean that when the person is burning forward, the person complains of pain around the coccyx region, that around the buttocks region, that is inside the buttocks region. And then we could also say the person could have coccyxemia. Also, during sexual intercourse, also the person complains of pain around the anal region or around the vital that is the reproductive region especially in females also during the menstrual cycle so if you have any female that complains of pain around the inner region or around the reproductive organ region the person could likely to have coccygenia but then there are other assessments to really diagnose this condition and then we'll be talking about that very soon okay so we've talked about the condition the meaning of the condition and then we've talked about the prevalence and the fact that there are there have been other researches that has are still been carried on on the extent of this condition okay and then the legends of this condition okay so the fact is that there are ligaments around this structure that's the coccyx we have the posterior psycho coccygeal ligament and when we talk about the sarcococcygeal ligament, there are structures that connect the pelvic bone to the sacral sac, um, sacrum. That is the the tail region or the lower part of the body around the buttocks region. So these are ligaments: the posterior sarcococcygeal ligament and then the anterior sarcococcygeal ligament. These structures are very important to hold the coccyx in place so before we continue let's appreciate some pictures and then i'm sure we'll continue further okay so let's look at so this is the coccyx 
coxes so you could see the red signal here the red signal here that shows that um this red signal means that there's pain around this region so this is the coxes the coxes they are fused bones around the buttocks region so inside the buttocks region the coxes the tailbone the tailbone and okay so this is the anatomy of the of the um, pelvic bone so we have the sacral canal we have the muscles around the side we have the obturator obturator internals obturator externals there are so many muscles around the coxis region okay so we're talking about various postures that are necessary to be able to hold the 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 the, the body in place and prevent this condition from occurring so this is a very likely condition or presentation of this condition so we could have the shifting of the bone forward so this is the coxis so we like that you can see that the bones are all in alignment but when it gets to this side there's a shift forward you could see the shift forward uh -huh. So then we could have anterior dislocation of the coxis forward. So we have anterior dislocation of the coxis and we could have pain and this could help us to diagnose the condition as coxidinia. And the second one is posterior dislocation. So we have the bone, the coxis bone, the coxis vertebrae shifting backwards. Uh -huh. So you see that it shifted backwards. That's it. It shifted backwards. That's it. Shifted backwards, and we could have posterior dislocation of the coxis. And then this is also an anterior angular dislocation. So it shifted this way. You see that it's bent this way, and this could impinge on structures around the coxis, and could cause pain around the buttocks region. We could have also hook coxis. Hook coxes, and this would also present in pain around the coxes region. Okay, so let's look at the very ligaments surrounding the coxes. So you have this white white structures are all ligaments. So lower ligament, anterior lumbosacral ligament. Yes. So this hold the back in place from going forward. But this structure here is a coxes. We have these white structures here, we can see the white structures here. They are all ligaments, ligaments here, ligaments here, ligaments here, and they hold the bone in place, and they bring them into close contact. Okay. So you could see a pregnant woman here with a bone here, and look at the bone here, and you could see this red mark here showing that the pregnant mother has pain here. So on carrying the baby, sits on the pelvic bone and this could result in coccidemia okay so a very good presentation of the condition is here so this is the coccyx as we mentioned earlier this is the coccyx okay yeah, so this is the coccyx this is a small thing here you could see it here the coccyx this is the coccyx the coccyx or the coccygia bone okay Okay, so we 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 talking about yes the coccidemia coccidemia and we look at some pictures that shows how the bone looks like um, and various pain presentations of the condition. So now we're talking about injuries that are likely to happen when someone has coccidemia. Yes, so we could have sprain, that is sprain, that is um, tears in the ligament around the um, bone. And could have strain, that is the muscles around that side getting torn. And could have surgical operation. So when a patient goes for surgery, that is maybe during delivery um, or during um, fracture around that side, there could be impingement to the surrounding structures and this will cause coccidemia okay so 
these are some of the causes or the injuries that could result in the coccygenia. Now I'm talking about diagnosis. So how do you diagnose coccygenia? So we have various um, tools that we use. We have x-rays. So x-rays are very important structures to diagnose this condition. In case there's a fracture around the it will help us to see how severe the um, fracture is. And also, we could have, um, aside fracture, we could have use of MRI. So we MRI to be able to see if there are torn ligaments around the side and then we can appreciate the extent of the injury. Also, we could have CT scans and other various investigation procedures. Aside the use of this diagnosis procedures, we have various physical tests. So a physical therapist, we can palpate around the region. And then if the patient complains of pain, we could also help it will also help in the treatment as physical therapist. So after diagnosing, we talk about treatment. So how do we treat this condition? To the extent of the injury, also we infer the level of treatment. So if the pain is very severe, we advise rest. So we rest that side and prevent any activity. The patient has to lie down probably the whole day without doing any activity to reduce the pain if it's very if, if it's an injury or incident that occurred within some few hours we could use ice so ice for about 15 20 minutes so we put ice around the bottom region and then move ice around the side for some time and then we could use if it's more than a day or three days we could use warm therapy so we get hot water bottle hot water bottle around the side and put it there to relieve the pain we could if the pain is so severe we could take in um, NSAIDs, that is ibuprofen, you could take paracetamol to help to reduce the pain or we could wrap ointment around the side. And then we go through various exercises. There are so many exercises that we go through. We have pelvic floor exercises. I'm sure we will have a, a good presentation or pictures surrounding um, good pictures to be able to appreciate this um, condition. And then we have aside exercises, also we have posture re education. So we advise that don't sit down for long, try and take some walks. It's advisable to sit down for shorter this shorter period of time than sitting for longer period of time. We have um ergonomics also, so we get various cushions to be able to minimize so much pressure around their structure. And this helps also to relieve the pain in the in the um, around the coccyx region, and this helps also to improve the level of the pain and then prevent further worsening of the condition. Okay, so these are various exercises that we could do: pelvic exercises. We could also do you could lie on your stomach and then raise your leg up we could do squeeze exercises we could do um we could do isometric exercises we could do so many exercises as physical therapists so upon our assessment and our diagnosis then we can treat this condition so now we talk about lifestyle modification so what can we do to prevent this condition yes um first of all we could we are supposed to avoid sitting down for a long period of time. So if you're a banker, you have no option. But it's advisable that you can get up and take various walks to prevent this condition from occurring. Also, good posture. So you can have lumbar roll. As physical therapist, we have something we call lumbar roll or pillow at your back to help to position the body in a very upright manner. Also, we also advise to not to lie on your back. When you have this condition, when you have pain around the buttocks, which you don't lie on your back, rather try and lie on your side. And this helps to relieve the pain in a shorter period of time. Also, if you're pregnant and you're experiencing this pain, if you're comfortable on sitting on a gym ball or we call a medicine ball, it's good. And this helps also to exercise the back and also helps to exercise the muscles around the coccyx region. And this helps to prevent the pain from 
exhibiting or increasing also we also have a um, use of cushion so it's better also we have a device cushion that we sit on if you have this pain and this helps to relieve the pain also it's very important that we avoid constipation so we eat balanced diet we eat more fruits and we drink a lot of water about 1.5 liters of water or two liters of water every single day and this helps to relieve one from having this condition called coccidinia if you have this condition we could also apply warm compress around the side or we can ice that side to relieve the pain also when you have this condition you have to also find your comfort zone so the comfort positions where you are likely to have this pain and then preferably see a physical therapist or medical doctor so you can explain this condition to him or her and then we'll treat this condition accordingly we have pelvic floor muscle exercises that we also do as I mentioned earlier on one that if you have this pain you can just hold your pelvic region so you hold as if you are going to pass urine you hold your urine and squeeze and lift your coccyx region area a little bit so you squeeze your genital region you squeeze and hold for about 10 seconds and then relax so we do that for some number of times as often as possible and this helps also to relieve pain around this structure called the coccyx and this is called isometric exercises okay so these are some of the um, 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 exercises that we can do when we have coccidinia i'm sure we will see some pictures after this presentation and then we can appreciate this condition very very well and i'm, I'm glad that um we 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 we, we, are, we are we are understanding this condition so it's called coccidinia or tailbone pain yes and more more people who are prevalent to these conditions are females because they are likely to carry babies very often so get getting pregnant and carrying the babies for nine months they can have this condition and also if you have trauma to this place if you have injury to this side they could have coccidinia okay so um, um i if you have any question we are welcome for any question all questions are welcomed so that we can talk about it so you're talking about coccygenia please if you have any question you can ask now or any question in our previous um discussion if you have any question in a previous discussion you can ask so that we can discuss it yes and um, coccygenia coccygenia okay Okay, any question please? You can see Quachua okay, and I can see uh, yes, you can see some number of okay. Um any question? Okay, is it painful? Yes. It, as I said it's mild moderate and severe pain. So depending on the level of severity, that is how injured the um surrounding structure is yes then it could have it severe it could be very severe where you can't even move yeah it can be very severe okay okay so any questions so far any questions so far um, okay so we're talking about coccidinia 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 any question please any question 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 all questions are welcome yes all questions are welcome all questions are welcome and um, we have about two minutes for any question for this condition any question please any question any question any question um, okay any question any question any question okay. so now we'll zoom into looking up the pictures so that we can appreciate this condition okay so it looks like um let me see tayo yeah i can see you just entered the discussion yes we were talking about coccidinia that is tailbone pain 
and then so many conditions yes and so many outline discussions okay um any question please okay thank you very much thank you very much mr tayo okay any question any question okay i'm glad that we've, we've learned a lot from this condition and then after this presentation there will be pictures to be able to appreciate this condition very well and then we can share on the various platforms okay so any question still waiting for any question one question yes one question just a question i know someone has a question any question it could not be from this presentation but other presentations all questions are welcome okay we are waiting Okay, any question please? Okay. Um any question please? We have about a minute more. A minute more. Oof. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. So it looks like we don't really have a uh, some questions. Okay, so now Any question, please. Any question, any question. Okay. So, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your time. And then it's about Recall Health International Foundation. And then we are aimed at being lead advocate in child health and adult health. And if you have any support, you could just call on us. And then we're, we're very glad to assist or us in our various endeavors thank you very much have a blessed evening and then the next topic for presentation is a very also interesting topic it's, it's called diastasis rectus abdominis dra dra i'm sure we are interested in learning this condition yes in fact it actually let me just give you a, a gist about it so not even not anyone can suffer from this condition mostly it involves people who have given birth yes so diastasis rectus abdominis so i'm sure we are all interested in learning this topic and getting to know more about this condition and then we will have a fair idea of it and share our knowledge with others thank you very much for your present for your time and thank you very much for everything have a blessed evening May the Lord be with us all. Thank you very much. Take care. We love you. Have a blessed evening. Take care. Bye.